It sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? It definitely feels like it's another day, another problem with this Mini. Maybe it's, maybe it's just my Mini. Maybe no other Mini has this problem. Although, a lot of people tend to say that they have bad problems. <laughs> Which reminds me of this one comment that they came through on the channel. I can't remember it, but I'll read it out in a bit. It's, um, it's hilarious. It's just brilliant. Anyway, it's a Saturday morning. It's coming up to nine o'clock and I'm heading back to the garage. Um, yeah, the car's going back into the garage again. This time it's got a water problem. The water pump's gone. But I'm also going to run over everything that's been done on this car, everything that I've had to change and how much it's cost me. So if you're in the market for buying one of these cars, this video might put you off it because this is the video where I say, don't buy a Mini Cooper unless mm, you're prepared to spend a bit of money. There he is, watch him still there. Mechanic of the Year. What are we doing today then, Charlie? Uh, water pump and the coolant crossover tube. Because it's knackered. It's knackered and it's pissed out, so. Yeah. Is this a common issue on minis? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is just a common issue. <laughs> yeah. Only just thing. one big issue. The good thing is, the only thing that's actually good on these is the brakes. Yeah, yeah. I've not had it before. No, I'm not even saying it. What's that thing called? It's just like a wheel arch cover thing, I suppose. Wheel arch liner. Wheel arch liner. Nice. We can now see right in here. So it covers up. So it covers all of this, all your body work. Yeah. And then it will cover up uh, your auxiliary belt. Of course, you've got crank pulley, your AC compressor, and a couple of bits of wiring and pipes. And if we look here, that right there is what drives your water pump. All right. Okay, off my that. dodgy water pump. Your dodgy water pump, yeah. Yeah. Fucked up water pump. That thing right there, my finger's tapping, that's the water pump. Right. So this is going to be a, a fun day. Some good stuff, isn't it? You got it? Yeah. I had a really interesting comment on the channel. Yeah. I put, my other half had a mini. It was a great car as long as you discount the boot struts failing and the boot hitting her on the head. The plastic door stay failed, the exhaust snapped in half, the clutch failed at 80, though along with the dual mass flywheel, the coolant expansion tank split in half, leaving her stranded, the power steering would intermittently fail, which was really dangerous. Apart from that, it was a great car. <laughs> What a great comment. That came from Sidecar Body 1441 so thanks for that. Love comments coming in like that because it makes me feel a little bit better about mine. <laughs> I thought it'd be quite interesting just to go through some of the things I've had done on this Mini just in case you're in the market for buying one. And uh, trust me, there's a few bits. First of all, I bought the car in June 2023 and it cost £5,200 although I did partex the old one, the black one, so I'm not really sure how much I actually paid for it, to be honest with you. At that point, it had 65,000 miles on the clock, so I thought it was going to be a bargain of a car. I thought it was going to be a really good car. So the first expense was on the very same day of buying the car, when I was driving it home, <laughs> and, I, and the run flat warning came on it, and I pulled up, and there was a massive bulge on the tyre. That was the first job, was to get a new tyre on it, and that cost £110. Expense number two was the headlight level sensor. You remember that one, Charlie? Oh, yeah. It's a comment on any vehicle that has a um, has self living headlights. Um, what happens is the bar on the sensor, it's just a plastic bar, but it's got metal ball joints on it. And what happens is when they rust, and of course they rust, they go solid, so they can't move as well. And that's attached to your lower arm. Yeah. And this goes up. And the sensor doesn't want to go up. Well, the sensor yeah. wants to go up, the arm doesn't want to go at the right angle, the bar ends up snapping somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and that's a common issue after 
I mean, yeah, about 50,000 miles on most yeah. cars, so leveling headlights. Um, I was driving down the road and the lights were low. Yeah, it's also a MOT failure. So the cost to that was £133. <laughs> it goes on. Right, expense number three was the MOT, which standard, every car's got to have an MOT. That was £54.65 back then. So from getting the MOT done, I actually had a period of problem-free motoring until 14th of October when I had a blowout on the M1. What an experience that was. Uh, because they were run flats, I thought I'd be safe just to get it off the motorway. Mm -hmm. So I got to a place called Ashby de la Zeus to a quick fit garage. And I showed them what had gone on and they said, well, no, you, you need a new tyre, it's completely like shredded. And I was like, great, can you put one on? And he went, no, because we haven't got one in stock. I'm like, great, can you put a normal tyre on again? He goes, no, because we're not allowed to mix tyres, as in run flats and normal tyres. So that was definitely the point I thought, right, I'm getting rid of run flats. Yeah. So the next time I had to do like a big purchase of tyres, that's, that's pretty much what I did. The worst thing about that night was that my, I was stranded in Ashby de la Zouge. So I called upon the AA and I waited three hours for the AA to get here or to get to me. And when they turned up, they said, oh no, sorry, your policy's void because you've been driving on defective tyres. And they just left me there. <laughs> it was a nightmare. So that night, that cost me another £111 for a tyre. It cost me £50 in uh, hotel fees and around £40 in taxi journeys to find a hotel. And that was definitely the point where I thought, I'll get rid of run flats. So if you've got run flats on your car, maybe you might want to just lose them. Right. Yeah. A lot of people think that they can just drive however they want on run flats, but you're only not meant to exceed about 25 miles an hour. Yeah. And then, because what happens is when you're driving for too long, is then because the basically what happens is when they go down, they bog out. Yeah. The rim of the tyre will just press against it, and you've got all the weight of the car on that, and you go at speed, it just starts shutting the tyre up. Yeah, it was completely shredded. Yeah. But that's what this guy from the AA was saying. He was saying, oh, you're driving on defective tyres. I'm like, well, yeah, because I've got it off the motorway. Yeah, it goes. I said, would you prefer to be working on it in a car park in a nice safe place? Yeah, or on, or on the side of the M1. Speed fast. <laughs> Great AA. Needless to say, I'm no longer with them. You're right. And then, fuck, can I find a hotel for the night? It was a nightmare. Oh. And then when I eventually found one, which was like, I think it was about a 15 mile travel in, in a taxi. And I got there and I got checked in. I thought, right, I'm gonna go and have a pint now because I'm stressed, yeah. I'm really stressed. And there was this couple that sat there and it was a bit heated between them. And I was like, mm, no, I didn't know, just, Carrying on with my own business, like just having a pint, just trying to figure out how I was going to get the car back in the morning. And um, and this, this this girl, she turns around to me, she says, excuse me, I see you smoke, could I, could I have a cigarette? I was like, yeah, of course you can. And the bloke turns around and goes, mate, don't you even fucking think about it. And I was like, I was like, ah, oh, ah, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, look, no, I'm, I'm not getting, trust me, I've had a really bad day here today. I'm not getting involved in anything else. Like, my mate, my day is going, oh, shit, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. But like the receptionist, she came over and she said, sorry, but you know, if you carry on like this, I'm going to have to call the police. He goes, if you call the police, I'm going back to prison. And I was like, fuck his <laughs> 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 So, go, yeah, so not only was it a nightmare with the car that day, it was a sort of nightmare at the hotel. <laughs> yeah, so that was quite an experience with the old M1 saga. And, uh, and then, actually, from October to March, it went all right until I had an epic fail on the engine management and the car just went awful. Yeah. It sounded like it was farting. It did, actually, yeah. Yeah, and that was the coil pack that had gone this time, wasn't it? Yeah, number three. Is that another common issue on the NIS? Or yeah. is that just a... Yeah, that's a, well, that's a common issue. Yeah. Yeah, they're... Um, like I said, because the coil packs are where they sit, they're quite common for it, because they sit right on top of the engine. So anything that gets into the engine bay, they're going to get affected by it. But it's just a common... You've got to keep in mind, that's, there's a constant pulse, about 25,000 volts going through every single time one of the cylinders fires, mm. or it's about to fire off. So it's a fair bit of whack it's got to go through to last quite a while. So it's yeah. quite a common wear item, but... You see on these quite a lot. Although I thought it was going to be a lot worse. When it, when it, when it went, it felt horrible. Absolutely shit, sir. Yeah, yeah, I thought, oh God, the engine's gone. That's it, I'm doomed. 
So we did that, and then we also changed the spark plugs. Yes. So the cost of that came to £123.75. So how are we getting on, Charlie? How's the job coming on, mate? I'm working in the space about that, about that thick. So yeah. It's, um, it's going. Yeah. You can see the warp pump now, and also you can see why it's failed. It's because it will, oh, can you? We'll compare it to the new one. Okay. Uh, it's a plastic warp pump. Why would they put a plastic water pump on it? Right, here's a conspiracy theory. Oh, interesting. So, BMW had a con have, in the past 15 odd years, had a tendency to put a lot of plastic parts in the engine bay. Plastic water pumps, plastic, um, even plastic like coated control arms, and you had a bunch of different like brackets and stuff are all plastic. Yeah. And the conspiracy theory was after we came up with, oh, BMW are doing, BMW are doing this to get more money off their customers. Because every single BMW I've ever seen, over 100,000 miles, the water pump's been replaced. Yeah. At about 100,000 miles. There's a bunch of brackets that break. The fans need replacing. Um, there's just other little bits and pieces that just, when you get up to that sort of mileage, mm. they just fail. There's just not a lot of space to be working with. That's an arse of a job, isn't it? Yeah. Charlie loves it, doesn't he? Hey. Yeah, Charlie wishes he was still in bed. The next expense was in June of this year, and that was the valve cover gasket replacement. Because it was just blowing oil out the top, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, the, um, the front section of it had literally gone rock solid. So it's yeah. like rubber degrades, especially if it's that thing that's exposed to oil all the time. Uh, it just it degrades and it went literally like a crack it and into the thing, got back, it was a bit of it, just bend it and snap it. So the next expense was the Bowser. That was the oil cooler, sump plug, engine oil, and air conditioning condenser, which came to eight hundred and forty-seven pounds ninety-five pence. Here we go. The car's taking a pee. There we go. Here we go. And that's where it was leaking from. So it was, if you can see there, yeah, that's where it was leaking from. So a lot of these, they'll have a little core plug in them, so that if the um, <coughs> water pump starts to fail, it, that will go first. So it just leaks straight down, so they're bucking it everywhere. But yeah. if you look in there, so if you look up there, you'll be able to see where it goes. Big old hole in the side of the block. So that's the old one. Uh, a bit of plastic, I mean the whole thing's plastic apart from the where the pulley mount's on, but the impeller's plastic and the body of it's plastic. So, get rid of that. Uh, and what we've got here is from a company called BGA, it's a company we deal with, and it's a full metal housing, and, oh no, it is a metal impeller. Oh, cool. Happy okay. days. <laughs> well, that makes me feel happy, actually. Yeah. No more plastic. No, so that's a proper, this will outlast out the car. I'm going. <laughs> and then it's got a little core plug in it, so that plastic piece in the bottom of there is the same as this little metal cup in there. So I made a point in the, can I just clarify, I made a point in the last video and I kind of messed it up because I was a bit backwards. Um, when ice freezes, it expands. It's not when it melts, it expands. When I it freezes, did, I did it pick expands. up on it, but I think people would know what yeah, you meant. But this is also to do with that, this bit right here. Okay. So in the video, I talked about core plugs in the engine block. Yeah. So when it when the coolant freezes, it's going to exp it's going to expand, and it's going to try and push out. So this is what's called a core plug, aka a failure point. So this right here will get right. pushed out, so it won't fracture. So the theory oh, goes. Oh, so that that bit there that that will pop out. Yeah. Oh, okay. So in theory, what it does is that's to stop the water pump from cracking. It'll stop whether it goes in the block from cracking. Yeah. And if the ones in the block pop out, it should stop the block from cracking. But ultimately, to avoid any of that, just make sure you get your winter checks done on your cars. Make sure your coolant levels are too right. Are, are, are right and because I mentioned it in the last one, but when you got yeah. too high concentration of coolant, we've actually seen it where cars all overheat. If there's too much coolant in the engine compared to so if too much antifreeze compared to water, yeah, you won't get any heat transfer, so no heat will get taken out of the out of the engine block, and yeah. then it will overheat the engine. And if the same thing goes, if it's not enough coolant and too much water, your heat transfer is great because it heats up really quick, but you'll lose, you'll lose the antifreeze effect of it. Got you. So it's about getting your mix right. Yeah. But yeah, before we put that in, got to get this coolant pipe out. <laughs> of course. And um, yeah. 
So this bit here then, it's utter rubbish. That's... <laughs> Hello, mate. So this is the new pipe that goes between the water pump and the thermostat. Yes, yeah, so this is where the pump sits on the engine. Yeah. And then this pipe sits like this. Okay. So it sits on the back of the water pump housing. And okay. And it goes right the way across the back of the engine, underneath the intake manifold, to the thermostat housing. All right. And a lot of cars do this, mm. but a lot of the cars that do it, it's nice and exposed. So if we were on that Fiesta there that we're yeah. going around, that one has a cool and crossover tube, but it's on the front of the engine. Easy it's to really, get to. Easy, really easy to get to. Slowly but surely, <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> okay. But this is, goes onto either the coolant pressure tank or it can go directly onto a radiator yeah. if it has that fitting. Yeah. And just use this pump right here. Yeah. What this does is it just pressurizes the cooling system up to, we usually do it to about, about one bar. Um, possibly a little bit higher depending on if the cooling system is rated for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and what you do is you leave it on, leave it on the car for about 30 minutes near yeah. enough and that'll give, so if any air leaks out you'll see it because the pressure will drop and then you can look around. Do you want to just favour and just take that? Yeah. Sure. I can definitely hear air going into it. I can't hear it coming out, that's all I care about. It's coming out somewhere. I'm trying to think of a sad song to start singing. Well, if you think of one, mate, just sing away. I can't know my luck, I'll have a voice break. Do you think that is coming out, or is it just the air going into the system? That's going through the whole lot. I don't blame him. <laughs> he's in his dark. He's in his dark zone right now. You look like Darth Vader's like younger brother. <laughs> Is that a good thing? I don't know. <laughs> it's a damn car. So the bill was already around about fifteen hundred pounds. That's excluding what's going on today. It'd be nice to get it back on the road though, with no water leaks. This that we're looking at right now, so we can see the water pump at the bottom, just literally in the middle of that. That is the uh, water pump housing, and a bit further back, that's that cool and crossover tube, and we're leaking around there somewhere. It's still leaking, Matthew. Oh no. Bloody car. But this sounds like, <laughs> it sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? It's not about, could be the engine block. Jesus. Sounds like you need a beer. I think I do need a beer. I was kind of hoping this would be a fairly quick job, but it's not looking that way at the moment. <laughs> 